Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Grey Goose Vodka. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've no doubt heard about Grey Goose Vodka. Voted at one point the best tasting vodka in the world, it is seen as quite the aspirational drink given its price point and elegant appearance. It was first uh, released in 1997 and was created by Sidney Frank, who worked with François Thibault, a well-known cognac producer. He continued to be the maître de chai, and it was sold to Bacardi in 2004 for a whopping $2.2 billion. Opinions may strongly differ whether Grey Goose Vodka merits its title as the world's best tasting vodka. Indeed, in some more recent blind tests, Grey Goose Vodka hasn't even appeared in the top 10. Therefore, we're going to taste it ourselves using the Bespoke Unit Liquor Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home for your own spirits, or you can use as a quick reference if you don't have time to watch the entirety of this video. Simply look in the description below where you'll find a link to the final write-up with the full PDF version which will give you a quick breakdown of this spirit and its characteristics. Interestingly, Grey Goose has always been known to be produced in the Champagne region, or at least the water source is in the Champagne region, and the grain is said to come from the Picardy region. These are both in northeastern France. However, just looking at the back of the bottle here, I can see it's actually uh, from the water source of Gensinc La Palu, which is in Cognac. So I don't know if it continues to uh, have it distilled in that area, or if it uses this water. Chances are though, grain tends to grow best in northeastern France, which is known as the Grenier de la France, or the uh, Barn of France. So the chances are that the grain is actually brought over to the Cognac region where it's distilled on site. Well, we'll now jump into the review itself. We'll look at the robe. So needless to say, this is a crystal clear vodka, no sediment. Uh, it doesn't leave any residue if you were to rub it against your hands. It is indeed a pure, nice vodka with just mineral water. It leaves uh, somewhat surprisingly wider legs than I thought, a nice scallop, and they uh, trickle down slower than I expected. And in terms of depth, the clarity does give a nice refraction of light. The nose feel is quite prickly, but not so much. It's a very mild bouquet. Uh, the notes that it delivers are reminiscent of butter and cereal. The intensity is quite mild. There isn't much diversity of notes, but there is a little bit of complexity between the simple buttery cereal accord. Moving now onto the palette, which I'm sure is the reason that we're all here today. So we're looking at an overall umami primary flavor. The mouthfeel is quite warming. It opens with a hint of lemon zest and a Venus uh, grape note. Moving on to the heart, you get some anise, some cereal, and then in the finish, expect an accord of licorice and vanilla. It's not overly complex, but you do have a very smooth mouthfeel. The maturity obviously is quite youthful. The depth, there is some depth which is quite impressive. The harmony is balanced and the, uh, the finish doesn't seem to linger on the palate for very long since it is quite mild in body. That being said, it's a very versatile spirit that can be used in a number of different ways. It can be happily consumed neat and in fact those who tend to have an aversion to drinking vodka neat may find this much more palatable than others and meanwhile it can be used in a variety of cocktails we'll, which we'll get to in a minute. Next I want to talk about the overall experience which looks at the presentation. Well, first of all, the distinctive smoked glass bottle is uh, very well known. This is a newer bottle design, I believe. The original one was of a goose that was in mid-flight, and this one seems to be the silhouette of a goose with this little eye and beak here. Uh, it has, of course, the French flag. We've got a red, white, and blue theme going on. Not sure why. What's quite nice as well is that we have a synthetic cork rather than a screw cap. And the top of the bottle also has this little decoration of Grey Goose Vodka with the uh, more well-known logo of the goose that is in mid-flight. 
The occasion is going to be very versatile. This is a vodka that goes well in formal settings as well as casual ones, although it might be seen as a little bit too excessive for more budget-friendly occasions. But if you want to impress, this is probably the bottle that you want to take out. However, if you want to really impress, rather than conforming to expectations, you could also find a lesser-known vodka, such as Belvedere and uh, Chopin, which are both quite affluent these days, but tend to be seen as uh, more refined vodkas among purists, or you could go for something a little bit more artisanal. Then when it comes to value, and here is one of the points of controversy, is that this is a bottle that RRPs for around $52. In France, I picked this up for about 35 euros, so a little bit less, but still probably about the same price as a cheaper single malt whiskey that's been aged for a minimum of 10 years. So make of that what you will. And finally, we're going to talk about cocktails and pairings. And this isn't scored. This is just a thought exercise that we include in the bottom right hand corner of every liquor formula, just to give you some ideas of how to best enjoy it. Well, first of all, in terms of cocktails, this is, wouldn't be something that I would consider as a main integral part of a cocktail. It's not going to give you necessarily the body and character that you would want in a, in a cocktail that really relies on what vodka can typically provide. Instead, you would maybe want to consider this as something that plays more of a secondary role. And if you want a vodka that is going to be much milder and smoother on the palate, it might also be a choice for you. For example, a vodka martini, you may want to increase the quantity of vodka compared to the vermouth. However, I wouldn't consider this in a Vespa with gin because the vodka will simply be crushed by any typical London dry gin and its strong juniper notes. Furthermore, you could use it as well for an espresso martini. It would pair along quite nicely with some coffee notes or even as a Moscow mule. The problem is with the Moscow mule though is that the ginger being quite, um, quite strong in flavor, you're not gonna get much of the vodka. Nevertheless, you could also consider it for uh, for other cocktails, such as a Black Russian or even a Bloody Mary, if you really want to have a smoother finish in the flavors. When it comes to pairings, you could certainly enjoy Grey Goose Neat with uh, an ice cream dessert, specifically a fruit sorbet. Otherwise, consider seafood dishes such as langoustine or even caviar. I wouldn't go for crab or lobster though. They tend to be a little bit bolder. A langoustine is gonna be a bit more refined and would pair better with a Grey Goose vodka. At Bispo Unit, we're very fond of cigars, therefore we've considered a few as pairing suggestions, one of which is the Placencia Reserva Original. This is made using organic tobaccos. It has some character, but a very smooth body, which would pair well with this vodka. Alternatively, go for an Avo Classic, which is gonna be much milder and somewhat affordable. But if you really want to uh, try something a little bit more premium that would be more in keeping with Grey Goose, why not a Davidoff Signature, specifically the number two Vitola. Overall, I do understand why Grey Goose vodka has been the subject of a lot of controversy. Indeed, it is a vodka that has been sort of born from this premium lifestyle and is seen as an aspirational drink. People who do conspicuous uh, consumption and want to basically show their wealth tend to opt for Grey Goose vodka because it is posh and it is classy. Therefore, artisanal vodkas that aren't as well known tend to be discarded and left aside despite offering an equally premium experience. Personally, I believe that Grey Goose vodka has a very mild and nuanced palette, which can offer you a pleasant experience if you're not a regular vodka drinker. If you don't like anything that is too uh, overpowering and has more balanced character, this is probably a good choice for you. However, if you like a vodka with a bit of punch, it's probably gonna be quite disappointing. Anyway, that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave us any comments if you have any questions about Grey Goose Vodka, or you would like to share your own thoughts and experiences, especially if they disagree with mine, because we would love to hear them. Until next time, why don't you head to bespokenion.com forward slash spirits to see our resource on different types of liquor. I'm sure that there'll be something that you will love and enjoy learning. Mm -hmm.